Hey everyone, welcome back to KDX Bricks Analytics. It is time for our next LEGO Investing Power Rankings video. I'm recording this on Father's Day, but I won't post it right away, so happy belated Father's Day to all the dads out there. I'm still waiting for my breakfast in bed, and I'm beginning to think that it's not coming. No, I'm totally kidding. Nonetheless, the show must go on, so let's get right into it. Here's a quick look from my last power rankings a couple of months ago, and there are major changes in this video. Of course, many Star Wars sets are no longer retiring at the end of 2024, so three of my top five sets are no longer on this list. And then a little teaser, two other sets fell off of my power rankings and got replaced by two new sets. Making its first appearance in my power rankings in 10th place is a Speed Champion set 76908, the Lamborghini Countach. Before I dive into the details of this great set, a few notes. Number one, I am only including sets that are expected to retire at the end of 2024, according to the Great Brick Fanatics list. Also keep in mind, I can't cover every single data point that's out there on all of these sets. These are the ones that I think are most important right now. They're my key thoughts, and I do expect my thoughts and the data and my power ranking list to evolve throughout the rest of this year as we get closer to all these sets falling off of the shelves. The Countach, it's a $20 set with a 4.4 with 455 ratings and over 15,000 community members already own this set. Those numbers are astronomical. The demand is very, very high on this set. On my enthusiasm score and mentions table, it has a 2.7 out of 3.0 enthusiasm score with 10 mentions. I watch all the other Lego investing and reselling videos on YouTube and collect a bunch of mentions and enthusiasm score data. Year to date, I've watched 200 videos across 17 channels channels and almost 19,000 individual Lego set mentions. The Lamborghini Countach doesn't have the highest mentions. On the top of the table, you're seeing low 30s and high 20s, but an enthusiasm score of 2.7 is very good. More evidence of the high demand is the 3,000 monthly sales velocity here on Amazon. That's one of the highest speed champion sets on Amazon right now. At 20 bucks a pop, that is $60,000 spent on this set alone in the last month on Amazon. CamelCamelCamel.com has some good news and then some who knows news, but the good news is early in its life, it shot up to 35 and even peaked over $55. More recently, now that the supply is everywhere because Speed Champions are in a lot of retail stores, the third party price is down near the standard retail price. This is pretty typical for Speed Champions, so I'm not too worried about that. The one thing I am slightly concerned about this set is that it came out in March of 2022, so it's going to have almost a three year shelf life. I'm not going to let that slow me down on buying it. I'm just going to make sure I get it on a really good discount and I'm going to accept that it might be a little longer hold time than the Speed Champion sets that only have one and a half or two year shelf life. Although this set has always been high on my hit list, the main reason that I moved it into the top 10 is because Lego just announced this Icons Lamborghini Countach that's going to be $180 for 1,500 pieces. It's the latest installment in their standard size brick built sports cars and muscle cars. I absolutely believe that this new larger scale that looks pretty much exactly the same to the Speed Champions will increase demand for the Speed Champion set. Now this brings up a good question what happened to the set that was in 10th place on my last power rankings it fell off i still like the new republic e-wing and shin hadi starfighter but the metrics from last time to this time were pretty flat i didn't see anything too new or too inspiring and since i did see something very inspiring for the speed champions kuntosh i said it was time to swap these two out for each other but i still give this one an honorable mention because of the five exclusive minifigures that are going for pretty good value my buying price on the speed champions lamborghini kuntosh is going to be $16. We're able to get that pretty frequently. Obviously, I'm going to hope for $10 or $12 like a couple of Speed Champions did right at the end of their shelf life last year. And check this out. This is really, really good information. I entered the set number into one of the bots in Ignite. Let me walk you through this table. The first column is time period. And then the second column is average Amazon price. We can see it's all about $20. So this set basically never goes on sale. And then this one is really important. The average sales rank. In the last seven days, it was 1,108. And then the rest of the time, it's hovering between 1,000 and 1,200. That is a very, very low sales rank. So that means this set is flying off of the Amazon warehouse shelves. Tons and tons of demand for this set. Next column is average daily rank drops. This is not how many sets are selling in a day. It's a lot more than that. This is how many times in a day that the average sales rank is changing. And obviously the larger number of sets that sell in a day, the greater potential that the sales rank will change throughout the day. And then this column is a really important one too. It's the average price when the set is out of stock. Obviously the first bunch of rows, there's no data because it wasn't out of stock, but the little bit that it was 
was out of stock, it was up at $31. And then the last column is average market listings on Amazon, and that way you can gauge if there are going to be way too many sellers and way too much supply. Overall, the numbers are great on this table and the stoplights are green. So that is another strong indication of great demand. And right now, not terrible supply. We know there's going to be a ton on the secondary market, but the demand, I think, is going to overpower that. In ninth place, I'm moving the John Deere Skidder down a position. I still like it a lot, but in the last two months, there's only been one more mention and it still has an enthusiasm score of two. It is a $200 set. I think that is very expensive. I have three so far. I got them at $140 each. I'm hoping to pick up more around $120 to $140. It is set 42157. It does have a very solid 4.4 on brick set. Only 1,042 members own it, but 880 more want it. And that's a really good 84% want to own ratio. The demand is definitely pretty low here on Amazon. Only 100 have sold in the last month, but the sales velocity for the other two Technic John Deere sets that are currently out are a thousand per month. The Forest Harbor is not expected to retire at the end of this year, but the tractor is. I like them both. There's been more buzz around the tractor, but I'm going with the larger set because it's the first large John Deere Technic. And actually, these are the first three John Deere sets Lego has ever made. But the larger the Technic set, the more action features you can get in there. It has a bunch of pneumatic actions, and I really like the huge rubber tires. And overall, I just think it looks really cool. I think it looks better than the other two. I think it looks a lot more complete. So yes, even though the demand is lower for the larger set, the demand for the John Deere Technic sets in general is pretty good because the two smaller sets are doing pretty well. On eBay, it's already selling average about 88% of the retail price. These two are about $185, including shipping. Here's one that's only $166. Here's one that's $210, including shipping. Now definitely keep in mind that your take home will be much less because you'll have to pay fees and shipping. I'm definitely not worried about oversupply on the secondary market. It's a high price point, the low sales velocity on Amazon. There are only 30 new listings on eBay right now. But let's look at some comparables on other large Technic sets. This tractor that retired in 2011 is from $60 to $158 on brick set. I know that's over 10 years ago. But this one that retired in 2017 is $180 to almost $350. This one looks really cool. I like the green on both of these comparables. I know it's a different shade of green, but I do think the John Deere green will help sell these John Deere sets because it's just a new different color in the Technic lineup. And John Deere green is absolutely iconic. After a three year hold time, I think that these will go for $350. Please note that the prices that I am projecting are before subtracting shipping and fees and taxes and things like that. And so if I can get more at a $140 buy-in than at $350, that'll be pretty close to doubling my investment. I have El Dorado Fortress in eighth place, moving up a position from last video. And I moved it up one slot because of all of the very positive comments about this set in my last video. This was a set that was most discussed in the comment section. I hear what everybody's saying. So I said, let's move it up a slot. It's $215 for over 2,500 pieces and nine minifigures. I think that is an excellent price price and excellent value of 4.5 on brick set. Also another great rating. 4619 members currently own it and 3,416 more want it. That's a very solid want to own ratio of 74%. These pirate minifigures are great. They're so nostalgic. They're worth about $60. That's okay. It's about 28% of the retail price. According to brick set, all nine of them are exclusive, but not all nine of them are exclusive. Like looking at the skeleton here. Yeah, maybe the headpiece is exclusive to this set, but obviously the rest of the pieces aren't that valuable. So for me, I go to the parts list and look at torsos that are exclusive. We've got this one where there's quantity of one, and then we've got this torso where there's quantity of five. And then scrolling down this white with the red detail torso is also exclusive. So in my calculation, seven of the nine minifigures are exclusive, but they're all still really great. Camel 3X has some good and bad recent third party sales have been right at or just below retail price, but there were some earlier sales that were well above retail. Looking it up in Ignite, it has a sales rank of over 94,000. Now we're getting pretty high on a sales rank. I realize that it hasn't been available for Amazon to list for a lot of its life, but one decent data point is that it's showing that when it's out of stock, it's going for $256 on Amazon. On my table, it has 15 mentions with an enthusiasm score of 2.5. That is awesome. And also it's worth pointing out that on eBay, it's selling sometimes over the MSRP when you include shipping. Here's one for 220, 
$100 with free shipping, $220 with free shipping. I'm really comfortable putting this one in eighth place because the demand data is kind of a mixed bag. The Ignite data is not the best. The Amazon sales velocity is pretty low, but the brick set owners data is very strong. And then of course the eBay sales prices is very strong. After stacking promos, Rakuten, maybe gifts with purchase, hopefully some sales. I'm hoping to pick this set up for $150 to $165. I think after a two and a half year shelf life, it will go up to $350, which would be a very good return on investment. In seventh place is a newcomer to my list. And that is because this 501st Clone Troopers Battle Pack just fell off of the retirement list, so it's getting pushed to 2024. So I wanted to pick a different battle pack. The only Star Wars battle pack that is still on the retirement list for 2024. And that, of course, is the 332nd Ahsoka's Clone Trooper Battle Pack, set 75359. This is a standard $20 set. It will have a year and a half shelf life, which is great for minifigures. Obviously, all of them are exclusive. Only a 4.0 on brick set, but over 10,000 members own it. Another 2,000 want it. I'm not so worried about the low want number because battle packs are army builders, so people that already own it are likely going to want more. 14 mentions with an enthusiasm score of 2.4 is really solid. The Amazon sales velocity is 2000 per month and at the $16 sale price, that's over $35,000 spent on this set in the last month. But one thing that you may remember is that I had the 501st Clone Troopers Battle Pack in the fifth spot in my first Power Rankings video, but I have the Ahsoka Clone Troopers in the seventh spot. The reason why I dropped this set down is because the 501st Clone Troopers has double the sales velocity of 4,000. And this set is maintaining a 4,000 sales velocity even after it dropped off of the retirement list. But overall, Star Wars Battle Packs typically do well, especially the Clone Trooper Battle Packs Here's one that retired in 2022, $15 to over $25. The 501st Legion Clone Troopers was kind of an interesting story because it had such a long shelf life, $30 up to $36. But remember, many people got this set for $15, so it ended up being a really good investment, even though people were concerned about the long shelf life. And then one more to show you that retired in 2019. Four minifigures, but only two of them are Clone Troopers for army building, but still $15 up to $46. In general, I'm a fan of Battle Packs with clone troopers this ahsoka set included and keep in mind ahsoka season two is coming out soon and there's rumors that she'll be making an appearance in one but possibly two movies coming out in the next few years ahsoka's storyline arc is just getting started so i think the popularity around her sets will continue to increase with all that said i'm hoping to pick up a bunch between 12 and 16 dollars and then after a two-year shelf life i think i'll be able to sell them for 35 dollars moving up one position from last time is the typewriter set 21327 it is $250. Yes, that is very expensive. Yes, I think it is overpriced, but I'm moving it up a position because it got two more mentions. So it's gone from three mentions to five mentions, but more importantly, it has jumped a fair amount in the enthusiasm score from 1.3 to 1.8. That means that the two more mentions were very high in the last couple of months. This set is still flying under the radar, but I think there's so much good with this set, especially if we can find it on sale. It's an idea set. Many ideas have done well in the past, Three and a half year shelf life, I am not worried about that because like I said, flying under the radar and the high price point, I don't think there's gonna be a lot of supply on the secondary market. A very, very great 4.5 on brick set and a really solid 6,377 members that already own it. Pretty interesting for a set that's kind of boring, seems like it would be kind of niche and such a high price point. And then a solid 3,361 people that still want it. So it's approximately a 50% want to own ratio. The Amazon sales velocity is a low 100 per month but here on camel 3x we can see that it has never been on sale on amazon and the dotted green shows that it's been out of stock a fair amount so if we turn on the third party sales boom there we go that's what we want to see early in life it shot up a lot but even recently it's shooting up to 283 dollars there are only 62 new listings on eBay right now, which is down from 104, so we're not worried about oversupply. And recent sales on eBay have been $230, which is 92% of the retail price. And look at this Ignite chart, really good. A very high daily rank drops, so lots of green lights there. And then we already saw the about $280 when it's out of stock on Amazon, and some yellow lights there. Yellow and green is a very strong Ignite chart. I find this data to be very promising. I'm hoping we get lucky and get a chance at getting this set at about 25% off, which is about $190. At that price, I would be super excited. I think after a three-year hold time, it will go up to 
$1,500, and maybe because of the expected low supply, it will only take a couple of years to get up to that price point. In fifth place, I have the Indiana Jones Fighter Plane Chase set 77012. This is a $35 set. I think that is an excellent price for what you're getting in the box. And then on top of it, it is 20% off more often than not. I'm still waiting because heck, it might go lower than 20% off, which would be awesome. But I did move this set down two positions in my power rankings. The reason behind that is because the Amazon sales velocity has dropped and recent sale prices on eBay are less than they were a couple of months ago when I did my first cut at power rankings. Now check this out. A couple of months ago, these were selling for $32 shipped on eBay, and here's one for $24. Here's one for $32. But then a couple that are best offer accepted below $25. Amazon has dropped from $2,000 to $900. The year and one nine month shelf life is excellent. 4.2 is pretty good. It was actually a 4.3 last time on Brickset. But here's a number that I like over 8,000 members already own it, and another 1,700 want it. Seven mentions with an enthusiasm score of two is okay. The three mini figures which all do look really good are valued at $17 so about half of the retail price I think that's a selling point I think the overall value in the box is a selling point and also the airplane in the box looks a lot like a World War II airplane and there are a lot of people out there that like to make realistic World War scenes out of Lego so I think there's going to be some crossover popularity with this set oh and I did want to show you that the old Indiana Jones theme has over a 600% growth I'm looking on Brick Economy and here are a bunch of those old sets that are doing really really well I'm not saying that the new sets are going to do nearly as well, but it's good to see that there's a lot of popularity, at least at some point, for this theme. My buy-in price is $25 to $28, basically the standard 20% off that we've been getting with maybe a little bit of rewards stacked on top. And I truly believe this set is going to go for $90. I think it'll be a two and a half year hold time to get there, but $90, which means an easy double, maybe two and a half times my investment after paying shipping fees and taxes. In fourth place is no change. I still have the Monkey Kid Dragon of the East Palace set 80049. This is a $190 set, and I think that's actually a pretty decent price. And this is a Lego exclusive. I think all of the Monkey Kid sets are Lego exclusive. Please correct me if I'm wrong on that. Look at this set. It is just beautiful, but clearly there is very little demand for it. There isn't even a rating established on Brick Set yet. Only 525 members own it, but 882 want it, which is a want to own ratio of 162%, if that's worth anything. I mean, I guess there's some value in that metric. But I'm mostly excited with how great this set looks, the short year and a half shelf life, and some similar sets that we'll look at in a minute that are doing pretty well. But first, the nine minifigures, some of these look really cool, are valued at $55, which is 29% of the retail price. Six of these nine are exclusive. On eBay, there have been a couple of recent sales, $250 with $12 of shipping on top. And then this one is over $200 shipped. So both of these are a pretty good clip over the retail price. There are currently only four new listings of this set, which is a strong indicator of low supply and and low demand, which is concerning. And oh, by the way, there have been zero mentions year to date on my enthusiasm score table. So there's a lot of things that don't look great about this set. But let's look at some comparables. The Heavenly Realms that retired at the end of last year, so we're only six months into retirement. On eBay, this set is going for almost $400, 350 to 400 with shipping. That's a great return on investment in just six months. And then here's the legendary Flower Fruit Mountain that retired at the end of 2022, $160 set. On eBay, it's going for 185 to 200, so that's not great. But remember, this one was on a pretty good sale right before it fell off the shelves. And then there are some other similar and really great Monkey Kid sets that have not retired yet that could all add together to make a really good Monkey Kid layout. Here's the Team Hideout. Here's the Megalopolis City. That one is so cool. And then my favorite is the City of Lanterns. There's just so much going on, and having the teal track with the little monorail is great. The risk with the Monkey Kid sets is the low demand, which could lead to a longer hold time. So I'm thinking after two and a half years, I can resell this one for 325 and I'm hoping to get a buy-in price of about $150. And keep in mind, these sets are based on a TV show and season five is coming out in 2024. I don't know how popular it is, but I've heard that it's a decent show. So maybe that will continue to grow popularity and demand over time. Now, before we go on to my top three, I want to throw out some honorable mentions. I like the A-frame cabin a lot. 213 
336, the office. This is definitely one worth looking at because it just got pulled forward on the retirement list. So now it's retiring in six months instead of at the end of 2025. I like the Discovery Space Shuttle. These NASA sets have all or pretty much all done well in the past. Sanctum Sanctorum is a great one, really flying under the radar, in my opinion. It's an expensive $250, but it is like a modular and it connects with modulars. And we do not have a modular building retiring at the end of this year. And on top of the great modular building aspect, you get nine outstanding Marvel minifigures. Ninjago City Gardens, it is a top Lego set ever produced. Really fantastic looking, so pleasing to look at. Tons of detail, great colors, $350 for over 5,600 pieces. I like all of the Sonic Brickheads, but they didn't quite crack the top 10 in this Power Rankings video, but they should do pretty well in my opinion. I also like the new Star Wars mechs. Three of the four are retiring at the end of this year. I still think these are a gamble, but I like them a lot and I am starting to pick some of them up when I can find them on really good deal with stacking promos and discounts. And then my last honorable mention, and if I had to pick, this would be my 11th place set, is this Creator 3-in-1 Medieval Castle. The demand data on this set is really strong. Obviously, there's going to be tons of them out there, but there is so much you can do with it and you can combine these into a larger castle set and scene. There are tons of great rebrickables with multiple copies of this set, and we've been able to get it 20% off pretty regularly, and I'm hoping that it goes cheaper before we get to the end of this year. Now in third place, I have a really interesting set, and this one is new to my power rankings table. It is a dream set, but it is not the dream village that I had in sixth place last time. Instead, I am going with the Nightmare Shark Ship set 71469. It is a $140 set. I think that is very overpriced, but as we've all seen, many of the dream sets have been on huge discount in Walmart and other places. Although I don't expect 70 or 80% off of this Nightmare Shark Ship, I do expect it to go on a pretty good discount at Walmart before it hits retirement. Most of the dreams theme is a pass for investing unless you get them at that 70 or 80% off. But the supply and demand metrics on this one are pretty good and I think it's worth looking at. I did like the Dream Village previously because it was a Lego exclusive and the eBay prices were really good. They were going about 50% over the retail price. But I checked eBay recently on the Dream Village and those prices have cooled way off. So instead I'm going with the Shark Ship and I couldn't have two Dream sets on my power rankings. That would be ridiculous. So I went with this one instead. I still think the Dream Village is worth looking at. Maybe that will be discussed in a future video. Just check out how cool this shark ship is. The colors are awesome. All the details. Remember, with Dreams, you build a base set or a base component, and then you can build your final set in a couple of different directions. So there's some variability with this set. Lots of play features. I love the year and a half shelf life. It came out in August of 2023, and I also love the 4.6 on brick set. About 1100 members own it and 1100 want it so that's a hundred percent want to own ratio it does only have two mentions with an enthusiasm score of 1.5 that could be concerning or maybe this is one of those rare ones that's flying under the radar that will end up doing really well obviously you know where i stand on that opinion amazon sales velocity is only 200 in the last month but that is twenty eight thousand dollars on this dream set alone in the last month that's pretty good i think the Ignite demand data is decent, and also the Dreams theme reminds me a lot of the Elves theme, and some of the Elf sets have done very, very well. I know overall Dreams hasn't been super popular, but it sounds like they're coming out with at least two more seasons of the series. I think the series hasn't been great, but maybe it will get better. Maybe it will lift off a little bit and drive the demand for some of the original Dream sets. I haven't gotten these yet, but my buying price is going to be $100. I'm really hoping for that great Dreams discount that we've seen on the other sets. And I'm thinking after a two-year hold time, I'll be able to resell it for $250. My second place set is also new to my rankings, and this is going to be a really easy one to talk about. It is the Brickheads Lego List and Gimli set 40751. It's $20, perfect price for me. It's a Lego exclusive, but the big thing is it just came out and it is on the retirement list, so it is expected to have a seven-month shelf life. Many of us have been excited about all of the Lord of the Rings Brickheads, all four of them, so I really almost could have picked any of them. Maybe not Frodo and Gollum. Sorry, everybody, I screwed up Gollum over here on the left in a video or two videos even. I think the one with DG. I know Gollum, I was just getting all tongue-tied. You know what? I'm just going to stop talking. I hate making excuses. Apologies. Gollum on the left, Frodo on the right, Naked Hamster on the left. 
I still love both these characters. Of the four, this is the one that I'm least excited about, even though I'm going to invest in all four of these. Aragorn and Arwen is amazing. Of course, Gandalf the Grey and Balrog is awesome. But Legolas and Gimli is the best because it just came out in June of 2024. It already has seven mentions with a max enthusiasm score of 3.0. And obviously, this data is very recent. So these numbers are fantastic and they will grow rapidly on this table. For a quick comparable, we have four Minecraft brickheads, three of them just retired. The one that was out in 2018 has gone from $20 to $108. And then the three that have just retired, they were $30 Brian price here on eBay. And remember, they're only six months into the secondary market. This one is 65, 65. Here's one for 55 and 55. So they're already about double before you subtract out shipping and fees. I'm going to hold on to my six of each a little longer. I wish I'd got 30 of each, but I was late to the game on these. Getting back to Legolas and Gimli, I think that set is going to go to $50 in a year and a half or less. And I think the other Lord of the Rings sets are going to double in a year and a half or less. And now to my number one set, I will give you a few clues, but keep you in suspense for a minute. It is a Star Wars set. It is new to my power rankings list. It is a helmet and it is the Princess Leia Boosh set 75351. Even though this helmet was not at all on my power rankings list a couple of months ago, I had to add it and I had to have a Star Wars set be the number one. Princess Leia Boosh is a $70 helmet. It's been on sale a lot recently for 55 it might go down to 48 the main reason i add this set is because it is a target exclusive and the last target exclusive helmet that just retired is this dark trooper and we all were saying we thought it would do pretty well but we weren't sure how quickly it would grow because it's kind of ugly it only has a 3.7 on brick set but let's look at the camel 3x chart and wow it is doing great it retired here in december and it has been off to the races from the ms SRP of $70 to 99. Remember, a lot of people got it for 48 or 55. We are close to already doubling our money six months in on the Dark Trooper helmet. Seeing all that, I am absolutely sold on this Target exclusive Princess Leia Boosh helmet. Came out in March of 2023, so just under a two year shelf life of 4.3 on brick set compared to the 3.7 for the Dark Trooper. 6,000 people already own it. That's solid. And check out Walmart. It's going for $100 because remember, it's a Target exclusive. So this is a third party reseller, $100 at Walmart and $103 on Amazon. But it says typically $110. These are excellent prices and excellent data points for this set. Here's the Camel 3X chart. It went as high as 144 earlier in its life. That's also fantastic. As we all know, the Star Wars helmet theme has been a fantastic investment. Here on Brick Economy, it's showing a 148% growth so far. But keep in mind, only six of the 11 helmets have already retired so far. Two more are retiring this year, and then the remaining three are retiring next year. Sounds like we are not getting any more in this sub theme, which could slow down buzz and demand, but I'm not worried about that negatively impacting this Princess Leia Bouge helmet. And then one more data point that I want to show you is the 33 mentions with an enthusiasm score of 2.6. This is the number one set on my mentions and e-score table. Clearly, a lot of people are really high on this set, myself included. I'm really hoping to pick up a bunch at $48 if Target does that for us again this year. If not, I'm good with the $55 price point. I think this one will resell for $110 to $130 all day long. With all that, I think this was an easy pick for my number one position. All right, that's my full power rankings list. Check it over. Leave me any comments where you agree or disagree. I'll take those into consideration when I do my next power rankings video. Thanks a lot for watching. That's a wrap, and I will catch you in the next one. Oh, and don't forget, my videos are for entertainment purposes only. I do not provide financial advice. You got to get that from somebody else.